Hey everyone, this is Helena and I'm here with Mike Goldstein, my BFF, founder of Easy Dating Coach and amazing relationship expert and coach for women. Welcome, Mike. Helena, I'm <laughs> so excited to be with you. This is going to be fun. Yes, for those of you watching live, thank you so much for all your sweet comments. We were just having some te technical difficulties, but we're all good to go now. Hopefully you guys can hear us and see us and everything. If not, let us know in the chat. And we are super excited for today's live stream. We're going to be sharing five surprising factors that make a man feel addicted to you. Addicted in a really good way where he just can't get enough of you because he just feels so good every time he's around you. And Mike, is there anything you want to say before we get started? Ah, like, as Tom can attest to, just be like Helena, because men <laughs> just love being around her. So oh my gosh. just emulate Helena. <laughs> that is fun. That is hilarious. Because I'm like starting, I'm all irritable because of our sound issues. One of my lights is about to go out. So I'm not feeling like my normal self right now, but Mike has this amazing ability to just, you know, make me feel like myself and make me laugh and just like lighten up. So <laughs> I'm so grateful to have you here. We're just waiting for a few more people to come on. And how are you guys doing? Where are you watching from? How's your week going? We love hearing from you. We just like to make sure there's at least 100 or so people so we don't get a bunch of comments like what was the first one what was the second one but we're so excited for this topic and it's something oh. we've been getting oh is there something you wanted to add mike i just want to let everyone know that uh it was my fault that we're late <laughs> i was having the technical difficulty and i'm sorry and no helena problem. you're amazing so oh thank gosh, you guys no for being problem, patient no problem. <laughs> oh my gosh yes and my cat leo is joining us too you can see him walking around in the background <laughs> <laughs> loves to be involved when we're doing live streams and it looks like we have almost 100 people watching so let's just dive right in we have about an hour right and we're just going to get through the content of this and then answer questions at the end so if you guys have questions about this topic or anything else let us know in the live chat and so mike let's jump in what is that first factor that makes a man feel addicted to you all right bear with me i took some notes today so i get everything <laughs> right um so the first one is being fully authentic and in your true essence. So the right man is going to fall in love with you for who you are, not for a strategy or a technique you apply. Um, so that's what I would love to talk about today. Can I tell some stories about this, Helena? Sure. Although I'm a little <laughs> nervous because I was trying to get Mike to tell me what stories he was going to tell beforehand and he wouldn't do it. So, <laughs> so sure. Go ahead and tell Go ahead and tell some stories. I'm Helena, excited. The story I'm... about you is later. Not, <laughs> at the very end of the webinar is the one where I embarrass <laughs> you. You wouldn't tell me what exactly he was going to say. But yes, I'm excited. You always have the best stories. So yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> All right. So I had this client, Stacy. Um, she joined me probably about like five years ago. Right, Helena? And she's like, before she signed up, she's like, you know, Mike, uh, I already worked with this matchmaker and she didn't catch my true essence, my authenticity. I'm like, what the heck do you mean by that? She's like, well, I had to go get professional photos. I'm like, oh, that's good. She's like, yeah, but she had me all dolled up in these like outfits that I wouldn't quite wear, like these dresses and then straightening my hair and all this makeup that I don't quite do. And don't get me wrong, I look good, but that's not like fully who I am. And so then as I was matchmaking, she kept you know, putting on these white collar guys that didn't really suit who I was. I'm like, oh, and so were you successful? She's like, not really. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. We need to portray exactly who you are and then we can get you a guy. So then what we did is what I found out about her is she's like, you know, there's two sides of me. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. There is like where I look like, you know, all dolled up and wear a dress and that does happen. But then there's like, if you remember like stereotypical gothic where it's like all black, she was that too. So we needed to like have both of those uh, in terms of her dating profile. So what we ended up doing is like we had the professional shots where she looked gorgeous in a dress, but then we also had some fun shots where she was like literally in her like slipknot t-shirt or her Metallica mm -hmm. and she was like in black and she was showing off her gothic like fun like punk rock type side. And, you know, it was amazing. Um, the reason folks are so afraid to do this is it's like that matchmaker and a lot of society tells women, like, this is what men want. 
And don't get me wrong, a lot of men do want, you know, that, but that's not going to work, right? Like all of us are just looking for that one amazing person that like truly gets us. So when we finally portrayed her as what she truly was, like a month in, this guy and her were having eight hour dates and eight, like two hour phone conversations because they had so much in common. And it's because we portrayed all that on her profile. Um, does that make sense, Elena? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I would always, I was trying to think of these three C's. I always used to give these three C's and I can only think of two of them right now <laughs> for online dating profile pictures, color, there was something else and character when the character is what you're describing because the right guy is going to see you and know he's interested and pursue you. And that's event eventually what makes him fall in love. I know you have a great video about that on your channel. And I have one now as well <laughs> on, you know, what you need to reveal in order for a man to truly fall in love. And that's what it is really is your own, you could call it your feminine essence or just the uniqueness of who you are. Right. So if you are I'm trying to think of some different examples, a little tomboyish or maybe a little nerdy, however you describe yourself, you want to show that, you know, not just in online dating photos, but just, you know, when you're out meeting men, you want to show that to the world because your essence, your authentic essence is what is going to make a man feel addicted to you. Right, Mike? Oh, yeah. And I hate to be like talking about online profiles because I know it's such a boring topic and we all hate <laughs> online dating. But when you're creating that online dating profile, and I know I speak for myself and like all of us, like it's the worst. You're like, when I go about my daily life, I'm just going to be me. I know who I am, but then when it's like profile, it's like, oh God, I have to market myself. Like, I don't know what to say. And so my, my other client, Liz, she's like, I love Bravo shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm like secretly like telling her under the table. I'm like, me too, me too. I love Bravo. <laughs> and uh, she's like, but like no men like Bravo, like none of them. Like I can't put that as something I love on my profile. I'm like, do you love Bravo shows? She's like, I do. It's like my addiction. I just like love being a fly in the wall of their craziness. She's like, is that going to scare men away? I'm like, it might. Let's do it. Because what we're trying to do in this authenticity thing is scare away the men that don't fit for you. And don't get me wrong, you're still going to get those messages. But we scare some men away. And then the right guy who, you know, like a guy like me who's like, bravo, yeah, I love bravo, <laughs> is going to be like, oh, which is your favorite show? Like, I watch uh, Vanderpump Rules. I've been to the restaurants. Have you ever been to Sir or whatever? So it brings in the guy that's like vibing with that and then shoots away the men that aren't. Um, and so just being that authentic, true essence, like, oh, it's so sexy. And I love that. Like, I can imagine. Yeah. I would love to hear your you know, perspective as a man on dates or when you're out there like meeting people, right? I, you want to, you can kind of tell when people are being fake or inauthentic or like putting on this facade, right? I mean, I imagine you just want to see who that woman is right away, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to stereotype here, but I was in New York and I felt like I always got this like genuine look at who folks were. Then I come to LA and I'm like, wait a second, she's pretending to be something she's not. <laughs> and like, all I wanted to do was be like, let me ask her questions. What do you really feel about this? Like who, um, you know, I, like sometimes it's hard to get people to open up. And so I love like questions like um, what celebrity do you admire most and why? Or and we did a, a live stream on this 36 questions to get to know someone. But like or what makes you, what are you most proud of? Or what's the hardest thing you've ever had to go through and hearing that story and then follow up questions like why was that so hard? So then you kind of get to the authenticity of a person because sometimes, you know, on a first, second date, we're nervous. We don't want to go into that. But if we can draw it out of folks, um, it can really build connection. I love that you mentioned that. You know what? I think I should add your free gift. If you still have it available, the 36 questions to fall in love, I can add that to the description right below this video. By the way, speaking of that, uh, Mike and I are wanting to do some private coaching or we, I guess we have just an opening for just a couple more clients and we're getting some amazing results with the women we have uh, been working with together now. So click the link in the description if you're interested and ready to go with private coaching. We can, um, or Mike can talk to you a little bit about that. That's the first link in the description. I'll add the 36 questions to fall in love right below that. Anything you want to say about that, Mike, before we hit these other uh, secrets? Yes. Um, 
first of all, Helena's community is like the greatest bunch of humans on the universe in the universe. <laughs> like whenever I, I talk to you, like so I do uh, a lot of affiliate work with a lot of different coaches. But something like I just have like so much love for Helena's people because I talk to you guys a lot and just you're the kindest, sweetest people. And I wish just I had infinite amounts of time to talk to all of you because <laughs> just like the best community of of a love coach. Um, but do me a favor, guys. I, I have limited time. So only if you're like deadly serious about getting coaching and knowing that this is like a six month thing and. You know, we're going to do this once. We're going to get you your partner. Or if you already have a partner, we're going to enhance that. And this is like serious. Like you're like got a foot in the water. Like you're ready to go. Because uh, unfortunately, I don't have infinite time. And I would love to talk to all of you. But I can, uh, you know, limited time, unfortunately. I love that. Yeah, so true. There's a little bit of a delay today. So if it takes me a second to respond or if I'm like looking around <laughs> weird, um, Jonathan Astley's watching. And yes, I love it. That's like one of the biggest compliments I get from other um, coaches and people I bring on my YouTube channel is they all say the same thing that my community is like the best, most amazing, smartest, most beautiful, just wonderful women in the world. And I totally agree with that. So thank you for mentioning that. Okay, so I love the first secret about, you know, revealing your authentic essence. That's what makes it. It's like creates this kind of pull on a man, right? Where he just feels like he wants to get to know you more and more, right? And the next four factors we're gonna share in this video are gonna help you do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take number two. We're kind of like tag teaming this <laughs> live stream together because we love just like doing things together. So number two, uh, fact, the second factor that makes a man feel addicted to you is when you're not trying to convince him of your value. And this one's really subtle. Sometimes it can manifest in more obvious ways, but if you're anything like I was about a decade or so ago before I figured out how all this stuff works, when you, you know, you might not be attracted to that many men. And then one guy comes along and you just have these strong feelings for him. You're really attracted to him. What do you do? You kind of put him on a pedestal, right? And when you do that, you can't really help it. You want to lean forward, even in very kind of small subconscious ways and try to convince him of your value. And men do this too, by the way, this can kind of work both ways, but you want to show him what a great woman you are, what an amazing partner you would be. And all of these things can push him away. Now, of course you want to be showing up as your best, you know, most authentic self, like we talked about in the last factor, but it's, it's this constant trying to like prove yourself to him and win his love and earn his attention or affection. And all of these things, a man might not be able to put his finger on it, but he just feels his attraction for you or the connection weakening or diminishing when you're constantly trying to do this. I used to, you know, you can ask yourself this question before you send a text message or, or say something to a man if you're questioning it. Are you trying to do something? And I think back to myself, you know, back like 10 years ago when I was in my 20s, I was always trying to do something or make a man see me a certain way or kind of like subtly manipulate the situation to, to you know, make sure he thought I was like a good catch, right? And men are sensitive to this. Mike, I'd love to hear your take on this. But when you're constantly trying to prove your worth and, and show a man your value, it's just, you know, women who are just naturally confident, high value women don't need to do that. We all know women like that who just they know they're worthy of love. They show up as their authentic self and they trust that the right man is going to want to be with them without this constant convincing and kind of pushing forward energetically constantly. Uh, Mike, I'd love to hear your, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Yeah. Um, I think it's just, I find it very difficult to respect that woman, unfortunately. Um, like she's just kind of bringing her value down in my eyes when she does that. And I think that's like the equivalent of like when you look at a man without a purpose, it's like his value kind of comes down, right? Like if he doesn't have like a career and some goals and he's just like kind of just going through life, it's like, why doesn't he have something going on? And that's kind of how I feel about a woman who's just like constantly like, you know, doing what you were just talking about. Does that make yeah, sense? Totally. Yeah. I see a question in the chat. It's if there's a little confusion around this. Yeah. You, she says she moves forward when she feels like a great, you know, basically once you know your value and you don't feel like you have to constantly prove yourself to everyone around you, you can do whatever you want. That's the great thing about this work, but just catch yourself. If you're subtly trying to like 
I call it going into convincing mode. This is something I've been talking about for years and years. So are you going into convincing mode? Are you subtly trying to like make a man jealous by talking about other options that you have, right? A woman who has other options and knows she can have any man she wants doesn't feel the need to do that, right? So just just catch yourself if you're constantly trying to do something or or make a man see you a certain way because you might be going into this convincing mode so i know for the sake of time if you have questions about that let us know below in the comments if you're watching the replay i can go in and clarify or um you know send you links to more videos so are you ready for number three mike oh yeah so ready <laughs> number three um so women who have their masculine energy in gear for themselves and their own life. So this allows them to be in their feminine energy when they're with a man, um, which Helena in, in, in the next one is going to uh, detail some of the feminine energy stuff. Um, but this is like having a full, uh, a full life outside of the relationship and not looking for a man to fill a void. So it kind of goes in conjunction with what we were just talking about. Um, I have this great story of this woman that just embodied this. And uh, Helena, you were giving me dating advice while I was dating this woman, actually. Oh, I was. <laughs> this was back when I was in New Jersey. Okay. Um, this woman was incredible. So she just had the masculine energy thing down. Like, So she started a business. She was 5'11". She you know, looked like a supermodel. Um, she was just gorgeous. She had her own business, and it was so successful. She had – she ranged anywhere from 300 to 500 employees – um, that were contractors doing work for her. And she had um, a Fortune like 100 company that was her client and just crushing it. And I remember like to go kind of into the feminine energy. So she had this masculine thing. She had this like project manager hat on managing these 300 employees and just rocked it. But then when we went on a date, she kind of like flipped over to her feminine energy. And I remember she wanted to cook dinner at her house together. And I think we've all been on that date where either it's the man or the woman goes, like, I've got the dinner. You go sit down and enjoy some wine. But instead what she did is, like, she, you know, when I talk about my nab, she made me feel needed. She's like, come help me cook. Like, come here, big sexy. Like, I need those strong arms to do something. And so then she had me cutting, you know, she's like, what do you want to do? I need to do this, this, and this. Like, what do you want to help with? And I'm like, ooh, I love cutting zucchini. So then she's like, all right, here's a knife. And then I'm cutting and she knows I'm words of appreciation. So she's like, oh my God, you're doing such a good job. Like those are perfect. Like those are going to cook so well. And so I'm lighting up like, ooh, I'm doing a good job. So instead of her like just embodying her masculine and being like, go sit down, I got this. <laughs> like instead she got me up there and now we're kind of flirting. Like we're, you know, you know, kissing here and there, like hugging each other slash cooking slash joking around. So she made room to kind of be, you know, masculine, let's get the cooking done, but feminine, let's like be playful and make uh, the man feel good. Does that make sense? I love that. I no, I don't remember ever hearing that story from you. So I'm so glad you shared that. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, in my world, this looks like having a full, complete life, basically not looking to a man as like holding something you want, right? Like he's holding the key to your happiness or your sense of worthiness or completeness or lovableness, right? It's about taking that key that you believe a man holds and putting it in your own hands and having a great life with or without this guy or with any man, right? Having a full, complete life, not like, you know, the first guy that comes along you're attracted to, you know, seeing him as the key to your happiness. It's like having that, I know you, you talk so much about having activities and hobbies and interests, even right now. And, you know, we're, in, we're filming this in 2020. There's, uh, I know you probably have some great ideas, Mike, about things you can do if you're, you know, in quarantine and um, it can be hard to like, I keep getting questions about, it. it's hard to like have a full life or <laughs> during this time. So if you guys have questions about that, let us know in the chat, maybe we can give you some tips, but yeah, I've found, this is just my own personal opinion, that when my own masculine energy is all used up in other areas, it's typically work and doing live streams, making videos like this. When I'm doing this, I'm setting things up. I'm figuring things out. Technically, it's like I'm in this masculine energy, like energy teaching mode. 
when that's all used up, then I can lean back and just be in my feminine. When it's not, I tend to want to turn that masculine energy onto a man. At least I did before I kind of figured this out. So um, hopefully this is helpful. Thank you guys so much for your comments and questions. We'll get to them at the end as many as we can. Anything else you want to say on this, having your full complete life, having your masculine energy and gear for yourself? I've got a good story about your feminine energy, but we'll do it after you're oh done with God. number four. <laughs> it's like I was, you have no idea how nervous I am about. I don't even know what you're about to share. Also, Leo's like walking around. He's like right here, like messing with the light. So if I'm looking around, I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't knock everything over. Um, so yeah, okay, that brings us right into uh, number four, which is more the feminine energy side, which looks like being fully present in the moment and not being in a rush to get to some sort of finish line. And I'd love to hear if you have experiences with this one, Mike. If you're in your if you're in your feminine, you're kind of leaning back, you're experiencing the moment. You're fully getting inside of every moment so you can actually feel it and experience it while it's happening. The opposite of this would be up in your head, you know, constantly thinking things like, does this guy like me? Where's this going? What's the next step? How do I get to the next step? You're trying to like solve something and rush to a finish line. We all do it. I totally understand that tendency. So it's not about being perfect with this 100% of the time. Time. It's just about catching that. And as much as you can, practicing getting out of your head and into your body, basically, out of your masculine, into your feminine when you're with a man, and just try it. This could look like, you know, leaning back physically or mentally or emotionally by not constantly worrying and obsessing and thinking about what the next step is and how do I steer this in the direction I want it to go. Um, does that make sense, Mike? I know we've, you've probably had experiences with women who are just constantly trying to push things forward or, or steer things in a certain direction and it's just not it, in my experience that doesn't make a man want to come closer it actually does just the opposite but i'd love to hear your thoughts on this one yeah i mean i think we've all been on that date right where it's like the checklist date and especially in my 20s in new york city with like um what we'd call probably masculine women that are going through the checklist like does this guy meet all the my needs cool and I literally got drilled at this one date where we went for um, like a drink. And this woman's like, all right, do you want to get married? Do you want babies? Do you want to live in Westchester or the suburbs of New Jersey or Manhattan? Um, and just like kept drilling me. Like, do you want to raise your kids Jewish or Christian? Or like, I'm like, oh my God, can we like get our first drink first? <laughs> so instead of like just being in the moment and just enjoying it and not worrying about like, I love this criteria and don't get me wrong. Like I love that you have the things you want and we'll, you can get to those answers, but then like get to the evaluation part after the date, like first date, have fun. All right. Now that the fun's over, the date's over a few hours, you know, you had a, a, an hour and a half, two hour date, you go home and you're like, all right, the things I want, did he have those? Like you do the evaluation after the date when you're at home and then you're processing and, and thinking about it. Not like, during the date, are you like checking the boxes? Totally. It's almost like she was, or, you know, women who are in that mode are kind of just looking, the sense you probably got is they were just like looking to you to fill a role in their life as a boyfriend or husband, potentially not really getting to know who you are as a person. Do, do I have that right? Yeah. Like what was the essence of me? She, she, we don't know. But <laughs> I don't know, but I checked, a, I, I checked some of the boxes. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I love that story. It's a great story. We have some amazing questions in the chat. Um, someone asked how to make a man feel needed when they're long distance due to quarantine. We'll get to that one at the end. I know Mike, you probably have some amazing things to say on that. You're the total expert at that. And yeah, I think that's phenomenal. Any questions you have about this specifically? I'm loving these comments. Um, sometimes we got to just, uh, stop being so calculative, just go with the flow. Totally agree. No one wants a drill sergeant. Um, it sounds like people are really relating to this. So this is phenomenal. Do you want to take number five, Mike? Are we ready for number five? No, I need to embarrass you first. Oh gosh. Is this the, <laughs> is this the story about me that you wouldn't tell me beforehand? <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think I've talked about this like so many times how uh, Helena is like the queen of feminine energy. Um, so I remember uh, we're sitting on the beach and uh, we're with some really fit people. And uh, also her, her boyfriend, Tom, who um, 
if you haven't seen uh, some of his live streams, um, I've seen him with his shirt off. He looks like a Greek <laughs> god. He just like got abs on abs on abs. <laughs> Like he looks fantastic. Yeah. You can't really tell in the in the you know videos with the t-shirt, but yeah, he's got a full six pack. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and he's so modest. He's like literally the most humble guy. It's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested to see where the story's going though. So, <laughs> well, so like, I was trying to make a self-deprecating joke, like, oh, like look at my dad bod, and Helena, instead of being like competitive and like, you know, oh well, Tom's got better abs than Mike. She was dropped into her feminine and realized, like, I was being a little self-conscious in that moment. And she goes, Mike, you look great. And so it wasn't, like, masculine thing is always competitive. It's like, I'm bigger and stronger than the guy next to me. But and in feminine, it's like, I want to support my friend. I want to make sure he's feeling well. So, you know, that's something that's, like, talks to Helena's character is she's, like, well, I don't want Mike to feel bad in this moment. I want to make him feel good. And even though we're surrounded by all these, like, really fit people, <laughs> like, and I, I don't know. I appreciated that. And I think, like, that's a great quality that, um, you know, women can possess this feminine, like, not competitiveness. Oh, I love that. Was that the story you had of me? I love that. I don't even remember <laughs> saying that. But you do look great, by the way. Doesn't Mike look great, everybody? He's words of appreciation. <laughs> yeah, amazing. I, I love that. I think that's I think that's so good. So um, <laughs> Tom was working out right here, actually, right before we started. He has all his uh, like home gym equipment. I'm like, you can keep working out during my live stream. I'm sure nobody would. <laughs> I'm sure nobody would mind seeing those abs. I love that you mentioned that. So yeah, that brings us to secret number four five mike do you want to take this one yeah number <laughs> five um oh god i love this one about women um women who put their own heart first uh rather than putting a man's desires ahead of their own um and this is like setting boundaries um i have a good story about this one i remember so when i first met this one woman in, in new york city I I was looking for a relationship at the time, but the way I met her was like out drinking. I was in my 20s at the time, so many years ago. And I was like, and I was a mature, immature 20 year old where I was just like thinking with a uh, little Mike down there. <laughs> and I was like, let me see if I can uh, make some action happen tonight. And so we end up talking and uh, I think we kissed at some point. And she said, dude, I'm not going back to your house. Like, you're crazy. I'm going to go home. And I did nothing but respect that. I was like, that's what a woman should do when my dumb ass is trying to <laughs> have sex with you on the first date when we barely know each other. And, you know, she was looking for marriage and that whole thing. So loved it. And so I respected that. Fast forward, Helena, we go on a date. Um, I'm, I track her down for a date. And we go on a walk, and then we end up back at her place. And I'm still in, I would like to have sex with this woman. She's gorgeous, and I'm immature, and not where I'm at today, where I really want to get to know folks. And once again, we fool around a little bit, but she's like, yeah, I don't have sex till I'm in a relationship. I said, perfect. So once again, we didn't do anything. But at this point... You know, she got me back on track to getting to know her. And it started to change a little bit where my brain went, wait a second, we've got a lot in common. So then I'm like, you know what, let's take her on another date. So this was a more extended date. And same thing basically happens where now we have an amazing time. And I realize she's not the type to have sex very quickly. So I don't even try. I'm like, this girl, this woman's pretty interesting. So then I got to know her, and I'm like, whoa, we have so much in common. We're having so much fun. So then the next date, Helena, like, I planned this big extravagant, like, uh, weekend away with all these activities because I really liked her. And at this point, if she told me we weren't sleeping for, you know, eight months or, you know, sleeping next week, it didn't matter. I was into it. Um... So she was putting her heart first. She wasn't like bowing down to, you know, Mike who wants to have sex. She was, this is my thing. Like, this is my body. 
-hmm. Like, you're nuts. Like, you don't get in here unless I want you to. And you've got to do the work. You've got to get to know me. And quite frankly, you've got to prove that you're worthy and you've, um, you know, meet my standard and have things in common with me. So she put me through the ringer and that caused me to kind of fall for her. And then, you know, the relationship could progress. And, and quite frankly, I didn't care when we had sex at that point. It could yeah. have been whenever. Love that. I love that. Yeah. So I was going to say, love that story. Never heard that one either. I think it's a perfect example of this boundaries, putting your own heart first. It's not about what date number you sleep with the guy on. It's about, she had a standard and she stuck to that standard. She didn't sleep with you on the first or second date because she was scared. She was going to lose you if she didn't. Right. I mean, I imagine that would have yeah, you, you can feel that. You can a man can feel it when a woman is kind of stuffing down her own needs and desires and just going along with whatever the guy wants because she's like centered around this fear of losing him or making the wrong move. It's just not attractive, right, Mike? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. and just to be clear, like it's also how she executed it. Because mm -hmm. she found this femininity of like, Mike, like I'm having so much fun with you. Like this is great but I don't have sex till I'm in a relationship. But like, you know, it'll be pretty good when we're in a relationship. Like she was fun and playful. Like, and so all I wanted to do was just like, please her, get to know her better. Not like, you know, some women will, you know, she could have been like, what the heck are you doing? Like, why are you trying to sleep with me? Are you nuts on the first date? Like, get out of here. And then we never would have been able to build a connection. And, and, tr and by the way, like, I'm a total idiot. I should have been going slow from the beginning. What, I'm only a dating expert. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but she was just incredible and knew how to handle this whole process. So I thought this was something to share, something to emulate. And uh, as per usual, don't do what I do. <laughs> I love that. I think that's great. Are we ready for some questions? I know we're like a little short on time, right? Um, I'm going to just here, I'll just start with these that I see right here and I'll scroll up. So how do you set boundaries? Let a guy know what you want. I think you kind of talked about it with the execution. Do you have any more tips on what to do? I know you have some great templates. I call it the Mike Goldstein formula for asking what you want. If you're, if you're okay sharing that here. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so men have very fragile egos. So we're just going to give you a three-step formula. It's kind of like the compliment sandwich, but it's like compliment, boundary, hope. So compliment, boundary, compliment, or in the in, in sex terms, the example I just gave, it was like compliment, like, Mike, you're so sexy. We're having so much fun. I don't have sex till I'm in a relationship. And then hope, but once we're in a relationship, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's coming soon. Like, I, we're getting closer. Totally. Keep going. So it's compliment, boundary, hope. But then if it's something else like, um, Helena, do you like, you know, a guy's not taking you on enough dates? You want to use that example? Um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Well, what's a better example? Um, no, something... I think that's a great example. Like, I think we did a whole live, uh, we did a whole video on what to do if a man's not making you a priority, what to say to inspire him to step up. Um, you gave a great, you know, like you were the greatest boyfriend in the whole world. And um, this would feel wonderful, whatever it is you'd like, but you don't micromanage and plan all the details and book the reservation. You just let him know it would feel good. Let him pick the timing and the way and then end with that acknowledgement and appreciation. Do I have that right? I hope I did that. You nailed it. <laughs> you know, I forget who said this. It might've been Alex Cormont, but, um, or I don't or, or Matthew Boggs. I can't remember, but I love this word giving them a mission. It's like, mm -hmm. I love our relationship. And then Helena's words, which this is Helena's, it would make me feel so good if you planned a date sometime, or if you took me to a Mexican, I want to, I'm craving Mexican. And when he's got a mission of like, I'm craving Mexican, the guy's like, a mission, dun, 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 dun. I got this. Like, he's going to go on Google and look up like the best Mexican restaurant and be like, Hey, Helena, Thursday ponchos like want to go and you're like <laughs> oh you do listen and like oh you're so sweet i would love to go so um, i love it amazing a mission so good so so good i think <laughs> you guys are cracking me up who cares about a six pack who is he? yeah i do not care what a guy's body looks like in fact i was looking for a man with an average body, as you know, Mike, <laughs> that's my number one <laughs> because I have my own insecurities, right? And he just happens to have this amazing body. But who, yeah, but what drew me to him was not that. I didn't even find that out till later. What drew me to him was 
he's the most incredible, caring, amazing. It's basically um, how he treats me is like, unlike anything I've, I've ever experienced. He's just so, he's just such a good high quality person. And the way he is with me and cares about my needs and moves things forward. And he's just, he's amazing. He's been in my life a lot longer than, I know I only put him on my channel like a week or two ago, but obviously <laughs> now that we're like living together, he's been around for a little while now and he's just amazing. And that's what, so I wanted to clarify that. That's what drew me to him. I certainly don't care what a guy's body looks like, as you know, my right? <laughs> All right, I'm going all the way back to the top. And I saw some great questions in here. Mike, do you want to recap these five while I look for some questions? Oh, yeah. Let's go. All right, five surprising factors that make a man addicted to you. Number one was being fully authentic. Number two, and I love this one, is women are not trying to convince a man of their value. So stop putting him on a pedestal. Stop trying to convince him of your value. High value women like just rock and don't need to do anything. Um, then masculine energy, having that in control, knowing when to be masculine to get things done. And then number four is knowing when to be feminine and lean back and support him and make him feel comfortable and make him feel needed, appreciated. And then number five is put your own heart first, boundaries, telling him what you need, doing it in a, a sexy way. That's our five. Amazing. You're so good at that, I swear. So, so good. I love, I just love having you on my channel, Mike. <laughs> oh my God. See, see what she's doing? See how she's appreciating me? That's why she's, that's why we're friends. She's so good at this. <laughs> okay. Christina asks, what if my boyfriend never asked me questions about myself? Any, um, any tips for Christina, Mike? Oh yeah. Um, especially on first dates, but like boyfriend, like this happens all the time. Men, and even me, I get super nervous and then I just start rambling, which I probably did for the first 10 minutes of this live stream. But um, all you got to do is say like, whatever he's talking about, if he's rambling about something, be like, oh, that's so cool. So what questions do, uh, or what do you want to know about me? And then, you know, he can ask you a question. Love it. So good. Um yeah, here's a related question. Some of these I think we answered already. Jessica, if you put a man on a pedestal, how do you change that? Great question. Um, I mean, a million things popping into my head. It's really about seeing yourself as the prize, not in an egotistical, I'm the queen, you need to treat me like a prize. Here's my list of requirements. You know, now prove yourself to me kind of way, but just in a really confident, authentic way. You don't have to say anything. You just have to start seeing yourself as a prize, as someone who deserves the love that you want, who deserves the love that you're putting out and the effort you're putting out in a relationship or potential relationship. Any thoughts on this one, Mike? You're a genius. You're so sweet. <laughs> I'm trying to move this quickly because I know you have to go. You have soccer in like 10 or 15 minutes, right? Um, Heather says, I've been dating a guy for a month and a half. He came on super strong at first, but has pulled back, still texts all the day all day, every day, not as flirty on a raging dates. Uh, we kind of talked about that with, we'd love it if you would take me, whatever the Mike Goldstein <laughs> formula is for this one. Do you want to reiterate it real quick while I look for the next question? Yeah, sure. Um, Heather, that's a great question. Oh, she added a little more. I find myself slipping into chase mode, even though I know better. It's like an addiction I can't control. I totally get, I totally get it. Um, takes a little practice, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one, Mike. Well, first, I'm wondering if you're exclusive. So are you yeah. seeing other men? Um, so if you're seeing other men, like, you know, men get to fight over you, like you're the prize. So until a man like consistently shows up and is treating you at the standard, like they've got to fight for you. Um, if this is your boyfriend, um, you know, once again, we're going to go to the formula, which is the compliment sandwich. It's like, I love, and assuming it's authentic, like don't say it if it's not true, but I love spending time with you. Like it would make me so happy if you planned a date sometime and it would just make me feel so good to spend some time with you. And he's going to go out there and he's going to plan something. Yeah. And or he's not, or he's or not. He's not. He's going to keep texting you and wanting that text, that validation or text buddy relationship. But I love what you said this way that gives him the option and it, you can see what he does, right? And when you're leaning forward, constantly trying to make something happen, I, it's like this addictive thing. I totally understand that, Heather, and everyone who's experiencing that. Your perception gets clouded, and you're not able to fully see who this man and what this situation is, the reality of it. 
So I love what you said, Mike. And I, as an added bonus, your uh, your perception clears up and your intuition kicks in. When you're leaning back, when you're connected to your feminine energy, your intuition can, kicks in. You can actually see this man and this potential relationship for what it really is. I love what you said about, are you even exclusive with him, right? Yeah, can I add one more thing? Of course, um, yeah. And then ultimately what we need to do is evaluate the relationship, not mm -hmm. evaluate the man. Mm -hmm. So like if you've already made up your mind that like this guy rocks, like he's got all the things you want, that's great. And you know, that's what we're looking for. But if he's not at the standard in terms of how often you want to see each other, how you want to be spoken to, how you want to feel like not only when you're with him, but how you want to feel when you're not with him, then the, the guy's got to go. Um, I think we stick to good men, and there's so many good men out there, that are just not getting how the standard. And once we tell them what we expect, which is like, you're being so nice when you say the words that I said, like, you're phenomenal. I just love to see you. Like, if he can't step up and do that, like, I don't care how great of a guy he is. He's got to meet that standard. Because, uh, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to spend a life together and... Um, you know, it's just not going to be at your level. Yeah, so brilliant. I, I think the very first interview we did, like years ago before we became friends, before you moved here and everything, you said that judge the relationship, not the man. And that always stuck with me. That's like the best advice. If, as long as you're doing that, you don't need us anymore. You got it, right? <laughs> it can be hard to do that though, right? Like I said, so one guy comes along and you're like, placing all your hopes and dreams on him on a very subtle level, right? So love everything you said here. Here's the one I think you'd have some great advice for. Natalie says, how to make a man feel needed while dating long distance during quarantine. Whoa. <laughs> I love that. Um, like there's so many cool things you can do. Yeah. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is asking for his opinion on something, asking for his advice, right? I mean, you don't have to be in the same room physically. If there's something you genuinely um, need some help with, even just asking his opinion. And then uh, of course, if it truly is helpful, showing him appreciation, acknowledging that. That's the first thing that popped into my head. I'd love to hear your thoughts though, Mike. God, you're such a genius. <laughs> that's so good. I think that's why I chose this career is because like I am words of appreciation. So mm -hmm. if I give advice and then you know, a client or one of you just goes, Mike, that's so helpful. Like I light up and I love that and I feel so needed. And that's like my purpose. So, and every man loves that. Like if I need your help with something, like I need your advice. He's like, Ooh, you need my advice. What do you need my advice for? Um, so we love that. Then like, you know, I would love to do a zoom date. Like I missed you. Like it would be amazing to do a zoom date. Like maybe we could like you know, it'd be so cool if we like did one of those painting things together. Mm -hmm. or maybe we cook mm -hmm. dinner or, um, I mean, there's so many fun things that you could do. Totally. It's like, I miss yeah. you. Like, I'd love to like, even that, uh, those games you can play. What's a Jackbox TV. Yeah, we, we did that. Remember the beginning of quarantine with our group of friends, we did game night. We do Mike and I do like yoga virtually together every Monday, <laughs> Monday. <laughs> and we're trying to increase that. It's, you know, there's like lots of, lots of things you can do when you're not, physically in contact. I like, I liked all those ideas. Those were really good. Um, the guy I like is not into me as much as the guys I don't like are, oh my gosh, who has not been there, right? <laughs> I totally understand that. I totally understand exactly what's going on. It's the symptom. Those are both um, two sides of the same coin. If you tend to place all your hopes and dreams on one guy who's not quite doing the job, the other side of that coin is, is when a guy shows up and he's like loving you to death and ready to commit. You, you're not as turned on to a guy like, like that, right? I mean, can everyone relate to that? I know I could certainly relate to that. And it's it's about amping up your self-love on the inside so you can receive that on the outside and feel bored and turned off to any man who is not interested in pursuing you. That's my quick advice. I got lots of videos on that. If you guys are interested, let me know down below and I can post some after this. Um, Okay. I just got out of a marriage. I had to take the masculine role for the most part. What's the best way to balance masculine and feminine after so many years? Um, great question. My mic keeps getting tangled in my hair. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> Everything that could go wrong with this live stream. The, the internet went out. There was a power out outage. My lights broke. The sound wasn't working. And <laughs> it's just one of those days, but I'm happy to be here. Mike, do you have any thoughts on this or should I take this one? 
You're the queen of feminine energy. Okay. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> not right now. I don't feel like, but thank you so much. Yeah. I would say it's not about balancing them, which I know everyone talks about balancing. I'd say it's more about combining them and ramping them both up. So you don't want to squash your masculine down. I can kind of feel from the energy of this question. It's like, how do I squash my masculine down, ramp my feminine up? I want you to become more of who you are. This is becoming more expansive, ramping up both. And just like we talked about in step I'm looking at my notes. Step three, <laughs> get that masculine energy going in gear for yourself and your own life. That could look like setting up a you know dating profile if you're newly single, getting yourself out there. And then, you know, what can you do just on your own, it, you know, to be in your feminine? It could be anything. Just could be getting in touch with how you're feeling in any given moment. I know if you were you said you were stuck in your masculine, you might not have any idea how you're feeling. You might be totally cut off from that. So just the tiniest little shift in that direction. Will will get you amazing results. And it, it all starts with how you feel. Um, sometimes body sensation can be like a gateway into those deeper feelings. So um, getting into some body sensations, my shoulders feel tight, my stomach feels like there's a knot in it. And then some feelings will probably start to come up Then you wanna get comfortable just feeling them. That's it. All you have to do is just be able to feel what's going on in your body um, in order to get you out of your head into your feminine energy. How does that sound, Mike? Did I explain that right? That's awesome. Can I add something? Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, so I remember when I was in my young 20s, I didn't get or I didn't even understand this whole masculine and feminine thing. So I didn't even understand as a guy like I was supposed to be leading and I was supposed to be planning the dates and, and paying for the dates and all this stuff. So it was all just very confusing. Like I thought equality and like and yes, there, obviously there is equality, but um, I didn't realize like well, in dating and in I should be taking the lead. And I think there's some men out there that don't realize as well. Um, and so it's frustrating because it's like all these women here, especially in Helena's community, you've spent all this time like researching stuff. And you're like, what the heck? Why aren't these men done some research? Like, what are they doing? Like, go learn some things. Um, so you can hop in your feminine and kind of encourage his masculine by like asking for him to and this is once again making him feel needed like he's gonna do boneheaded stuff like a lot of men we know 90 percent of women buy the self-improvement books and 10 percent of men do right so they're gonna be boneheaded i'm an idiot i mess up all the time so we can help him we can go like oh it would be so amazing like if we could get italian and so instead of hopping in your mask and be like, all right, I went on Google and I found Maggiano's or whatever, and we're going there at 8 o'clock, I booked it, be like, man, it would be amazing if on Friday we could do Italian. And then he's going to go in his masculine, and maybe he's used to being in his feminine, men are feminine too, and he does the research, he books it, and then you get to give him his appreciation, which we all know I love, and you go, oh, oh my God, you booked the best restaurant. Like, all my girlfriends have been talking about that place. Like, how did you know? And now he's like, yeah, I did it. I'm good. Um, so maybe that can help. Yeah, love that. I love it so much. Okay, um, Shawnee says, how to get a man that's been hurt and suffers from PTSD um, to be consistent. I actually, just because I know we're running out of time, we only have a few minutes left. I have a video on that um, with Adrian Everhart, who I know you guys all love. If you just search for maybe my name and PTSD or Helena Adrian PTSD, that should pop up. If not, let me know in the comments. I'll post a link to it. Um, that should pretty much give you you know anything you need to know on that without knowing the details of your situation. Um, okay. Just scrolling through, looking for some more questions. Oh, look at this. Mike is adorable. Oh, thanks, Mike is Jane. handsome. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. How can you tell if a man truly loves you but doesn't say anything? Um, you mean like a man who kind of shows you with his actions, but he doesn't really like verbally expressive? Be good to get some more details about that. Mike, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I think there's four signs that really show up when a man's into you in, in the early stages of stuff's really important. Mm -hmm. um, so, wait, how can you tell a man truly loves you but doesn't say anything? I mean, honestly, if he loves you, he's going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so if he doesn't say anything, there's nothing there. Yeah. But if you're in the early stages of dating and you're trying to figure out if he wants commitment, if he's serious about you... I think there's some clear signs, so maybe that'll be helpful too. And that comes in like introductions to friends and family, 
um, making future plans together. Exactly. Read my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prioritizing you, progressing the relationship. Tom and I did a live stream last week on that. The five things a man will do when he's, when he wants to be in a relationship with you. Yeah. He, he cares about your feelings. He prioritizes you. He progresses the relationship. Um, you can go watch that if you, if you want to hear the other ones. I can't, <laughs> I can't think of them right off the top of my head. I'm like trying to rush because I know you have to go. Um, great question from Beth. I get this all the time. Um, energy, energetically connected is when they pop in your head, right? Is that a good sign to reach out if you're in the midst of giving space or will that push him away? I miss connecting in flirty texts. I mean, such a great question. Oh my gosh, I've, we've all been there. I would say, what are you hoping will happen? Or the question I asked, told everyone to ask themselves, am I trying to do something? If, if the answer to that is, I'm not hoping anything's gonna happen. I just, you know, I just wanna reach out and I'm not gonna be devastated. I'm not gonna care if I don't get the response I'm hoping for, or if I don't get any response at all. If you have no attachment to the outcome, like I said at the beginning of this video, you can do whatever you want. If you're not attached to the result of all these little interactions, you can do anything. Um, the way I phrase this question, it's my instinct without knowing you would tell you to just keep leaning back because you're in the midst of giving him space. Um, I think it's totally fine to let a guy know you miss connecting and the text, but maybe do that as a response once you hear from him. But again, if you're not attached to the outcome, do, do whatever you want, right? And that your feelings around that will be all the guidance you need, in my opinion. Mike, any thoughts there? Nope, you're a genius as okay. always. <laughs> Thank you. You're a genius too. Um, okay. Um, was in my feminine dating since February. After getting very close, he disappeared for three weeks, and now is trying to come back. How can my how can I be in my feminine while openly saying I'm not okay with that behavior? Um, I would say the number five. The it's okay if you want to stay open to this person, that's fine, but you know, don't jump right back into bed with them. I have a video with Alex Cormont, who you mentioned, he's so awesome. I have a video coming out with him very soon about this exact situation that'll help you a lot. You know, don't, don't, um, basically it's like treating him like a brand new man in a lot of ways. He doesn't get special treatment just because he's the one you really like, right? So it's up to, I mean, what do you, what are your thoughts, Mike, before I keep going on this one? I mean, I think you're spot on. Yeah, being like, open while sticking to your boundaries. Yeah? Yeah, like, you're open to maybe giving him a chance, but it, I think it, it, it de it's dependent on why he left. Like, does he have a good reason, first off? So first get curious uh, before you write him off. Um, but then, yeah, to Helena's point, treat him like he's a brand new man, and he's got to earn your trust, earn your respect, earn you in the bedroom again. Just like my story of the woman that I was just trying to sleep with, like he's got to re-earn this stuff and treat him like a new man and, and tell him this. Once you find out his reason, tell him what your plan is. Like, dude, like, that's unacceptable. If you want to win me back, like, you're going to have to restart the whole courting process. And so you're going to have to earn it. So he gets what's happening. And then if he wants to put in the effort and re-earn it and realize he can't do that again, cool. If he doesn't want to do it, also cool. See you later. Let's go get a guy that, that does want to put in the effort and does want to court you and does want to make you feel special. Um, so I think that's the plan. Yeah, so good. So, so good. Um, I know we were like totally running out of time. Here's one from Jessica. I thought you might like, how do you figure out a man's love language? What do you think, Mike? Is this something you could just openly ask and talk about or is there some other way to figure it out? I think that's such a fun date question. Yeah. Like that's so fun. Just ask. and. If he doesn't know what they are, like you can have a discussion, explain it to him. I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I, I'm just trying to find a, like maybe the question that everyone can relate to <laughs> before we close out. It's so hard to, um, to listen and try and multitask like this. Okay. You're so much better than I am. When it's I'm doing really, this with you, know, I'm like I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much harder than it looks and it's so funny to, to go on Mike's channel or somebody else and like watch them navigate. It's hard to like multitask at the same time. So, okay, here's one. Here we go. Great question from Hazel. How about if you, if they tell you they love you, but the actions don't match, I'd say watch the actions, watch the actions. Unless a man's flat out telling you, I'm not ready for a relationship. I'm not feeling this. Then listen to the words, but in general, watch the actions. Mike, what do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, it just goes back to the concept that we're all working off of, evaluate the relationship, not the man. And so if the relationship, a.k.a. his actions suck, that's not your guy, because your guy is going to treat you like a queen, because Helena's community, all the women are treated like queens. Totally, totally. Okay, um, that was helpful for Beth. That's what I'm trying to do, not control and flow. It's hard. I appreciate learn. I uh, appreciate these and learn a lot from you too. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan's still watching. Yes. No attachment to the outcome. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what feminine energy is really. It's not, it's not some game or some technique you apply to try to make a man contact you. That's masculine energy. If you're being results oriented like that, I'm going to apply this technique to make the man behave the way I want. That's not feminine energy. Feminine energy is just being in the moment, connecting back to your own heart, your own feelings and then seeing what this man does and then following your inspired action, responding from there, if you're questioning it. So hopefully that clarified. Um, and I think that was maybe the last one. I, like a bunch of them just popped in and like they all jumped up to the top. So um, Jonathan says, <laughs> Mike is adorable. Yes. <laughs> Love that. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I think Appreciate I got it. to all of them. If not, and we're coming over a little over on time. Sorry, Mike, I know you got to go. Um, we'll if go ahead got and- got a few more. Uh, okay. okay I, I was late, so I owe you some time. <laughs> well, it's not your fault. You were late. The sound just wasn't working. It was my fault. It's, I should have been here <laughs> earlier. <laughs> it's my fault. Totally oh, my fault. Man. You totally made up for it with this amazing advice, right? Um, okay. Here's one from Christina. How to keep them interested a year in. Mike, any thoughts on this one? I think if you're, uh, I just like totally. Go, off. go. Hop in. Hop in. <laughs> hop in. Cutting him off. Mike and I are said we're like best friends, so we're used to like I don't you know it's this is just how we are naturally. <laughs> like, my in my opinion, my experience, if you do these five things that we talked about, you don't have to do anything to keep a man interested. He's gonna be addicted to you in a good way. He's gonna be like, I can't get enough of you. Like he's gonna keep coming towards you more and more. I mean, you both will be right. What are your thoughts, Mike? I love that. I was not going to answer it that way, but your answer is way better well, than mine. How so. are you going to answer it? <laughs> I'm sure you have some great things to say on this. No, I've, I okay. retract my ideas. Okay. I'm so glad you went first because your answer was better. <laughs> okay. We can, uh, I keep getting, um, I keep getting questions like that. We could maybe do some more videos just on that too. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. You're very welcome. You guys, thank you so much. Um, we already recapped the five, so we're good on that. If you're looking for some private coaching from both of us, from both Mike and myself, click the link in the description. It's the first one. When we're done, I'll also add 36 questions to fall in love. Another totally free gift from Mike. I'll add that as well. They're both in the description right below this video. Mike, anything you want to say before we close out? Yeah, um, the 36 questions to fall in love is like so awesome. Um, this was the num. Um, I borrowed it from New York Times, which... Um, got it from a study that was done, um, a scientific study done 20 years ago, where these scientists uh, had an hypothesis, like, can we get strangers to fall in love? And guess what? They found out they can. And what they did was ask progressively more intimate questions. So the, you know, the first question, not too risque. And then, you know, it just keeps getting uh, more and more intimate. Um, and so people started falling in love through this. And I've done this three times myself on dates, super fun, really got to know people. And they also made me realize I asked terrible questions on dates. And this is so much better because you really get to know a person. Um, and I've been, I've had this for five years. So I've been using it with clients that are married in relationship. I've had folks that have been married for 30 years use the 36 questions. I've had people do it on a first date, on a fifth date. Everyone loves it. Um, it's such a more strategic way to date, whether you're doing a Zoom date or you're in person. It's so much fun. Um, and in terms of strategy, like we kind of date, and I do this all the time, like how am I feeling on this date? Instead of, and like, how's the chemistry? Like, how's our banter? How's that? That's great. But what about the compatibility? And this kind of makes sure you don't mess it up. Like you're really going to see if you're compatible based on their answers and your answers. Do we align? Um, this takes out the guesswork because all of us just go on dates and we have fun and we don't know what we're doing, myself included. <laughs> this is scientific. It works. It helps you decide. Um, please go get this gift. It is going to make finding the right person, which you know we all suck at in the U.S., 50% divorce rate. 
let's get it right. This makes it easier. Um, go hop and get it. I love that. I'll go include that right now. I should have done that beforehand, but it was like, I swear, everything broke at the same time, like five minutes before we were about to start. So I will definitely go include that. We got so much great feedback on that. If you want to see a live stream just like this with Mike and I ans uh, asking each other some of those questions, I believe that one was called uh, 20 Questions That Make a Man Crave Connecting With You. So people love that too, but definitely go get that. It's just a written out thing. It's not a video or anything. So the link to that will be right below. And anything you want to say about working with us personally before we close out Mike too still over 200 people watching all the way to the end we're so we're so happy to be here with you guys oh, wow thanks for watching guys mm -hmm. um yeah um we have the most successful coaching program in the United States 83 percent of our clients are getting into relationships the folks that are already in relationships are wildly happy um so if you're looking for our help uh we would love to chat with you um so please Come talk to us. Um, just to outline the process a little bit so you know what you're in store for. We're going to do a 15-minute call with me. Um, if I think, based on what you're telling me, you need help with, I feel like Helena and I, or one of us, if uh, maybe you just need one of us instead of two of us, can help you. Then we'll move on to an hour and a half call on Zoom. So we'll interact seeing each other. Um, and right now, that call at the time we're filming costs $671. So... Make sure it fits into the budget. And then after that call, if I'm like, whoa, I can change this person's life, I can help them, or Helena can help them change your life, we can make drastic changes, then we will extend offers to do our program um, and we'll explain all the details, all the nuances, all the bells and whistles. And um, of course, we'll have options too if we need something in terms of your budgetary constraint um, we'll try to help you on, uh, some payments and things. We'll do our best. Um, yeah. ultimately we started this to help people fall in love, stay in love. And so everything we do is just get you guys to fall in love. So we'll, uh, money is very secondary. Help you fall in love. Number one, Totally. So we will do everything yes. we can for you. Yes. Oh my gosh. We love Mike, like pulled me out of retirement. <laughs> I wasn't doing any private coaching anymore. He, that's the way he puts it. I always love that. Um, but I'm so passionate about helping everybody fall in love. And obviously Mike is the perfect person to work with. He is literally the highest success rate in the entire country for getting clients into relationships within the first three to four months. Right. His system mm -hmm. makes it so that you only have to meet about six to eight people to find someone you like. We can maybe do another video about that sometime soon. I know people were, were asking about that. So um, we love you guys. I could just sit here and, and read these comments all day. You are so welcome. I'm so glad this was helpful for everyone. Thank you for staying all the way to the end. Make sure to give this video a like. Leave us a comment down below if you enjoyed it. And feel free to share it to any woman you know who's struggling. We all have friends and family members who just need to reconnect with their value in order to draw a man in right it's about taking your focus and putting it on yourself and your own life so um i could just sit here and read these all day you guys are awesome we love you so much mike thank you so much i know you gotta go you're we're running a little late here but um have a great rest of the week everybody and we will hopefully talk to you soon thanks mike so awesome thank you guys for allowing <laughs> me to spend time with you this is awesome thank you helena i love all of you okay bye guys see you next time